Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Before we get started, I'm just going to make a, a little announcement about the Visiting Artist Lecture Series. It happens every semester here at Cal State Long Beach, except this semester we've um, combined with the B Word Project. So all the artists that will be coming here uh, to speak uh, a part of this um, this event, um, I just want to remind you that up at the University Theater 108 on campus, uh, we will have three other speakers. Uh, and on October, rather September 21st, we'll have Faviana Rodriguez. October 12th, we'll have Alexandra Grant. And on October 19th, we'll have Charles Gaines. So just kind of keep that on your calendars. Um, and everybody's welcome. Uh, to attend those, those lectures. And before I introduce uh, uh, Christopher Miles, who's our department chair, I'd just like to say that uh, I think this series is gonna be a really interesting series. You have working artists, both uh, contemporary, but also you know maybe a little more historical coming in and talking about these important subjects. And um, it's, a, um, it's a unique opportunity for, for us uh, on the campus. So, I encourage everybody to come to as many of these events as possible. So I'd like to welcome Christopher Miles. Okay, well, um, I'm going to try to make this quick. My, my job here is largely as, as MC. So um, what you're going to have in front of you tonight is really, developed, is really divided into two halves. Um, the first half um, is a little bit of a few people talking and mostly one people talk, one person talking and that's uh, Kevin Johnson. And then the second half will be a little more of a conversation among a group of people um, along related issues of censorship. Um, I'd just like to say quickly, um, this, what, what Mason described is really, it's kind of an historic event in this department because it's the first time ever, while our visiting artists and scholars lecture series has at different times taken a certain kind of thematic bent or a tendency towards certain kind of interests or media or genres. Um, this is the first time really ever that our, our lecture series has tied in um, to a major um, initiative on campus. And this initiative really is a major one. Um, just to put it in perspective, the, the, the grant that is funding um, the B Word Project, um, the, the money that came from the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, um, via a selection process that was handled by the Association of Performing Arts Presenters, six of these were given to universities across the country. That's it, six. Um, and so as a result of the selection of this project, which obviously they saw as being a, a, a topic of prime importance, um, <clears throat> what is coming to this campus over the next two years is over $190,000 in funding to fund um, events across campus. I think 14 different departments are involved. So this is a massive initiative that we're getting to um, tie in with. And it's a wonderful opportunity for the art department to engage really in, in a collaborative relationship uh, with the Carpenter Center and also, also with the University Art Museum. These are the kinds of collaborations um, that the department has, has sought and, and that the Carpenter Center and the UAM have sought for years. And so it's, it's, a, great, it's a great chance at really a, a big level um, to achieve this kind of collaboration. I want to thank a few people um, quickly. Um, first of all, Beto Gonzalez, who is, who is the, the, the administrator of the B-Word Project. Um, the Carpenter Center staff, who are making a lot possible with the whole project and specifically uh, making things possible in terms of more of our lectures, far more of our lectures than you being held here in the Carp Carpenter Center. Um, Tiffany Sum, Vivi Fitirani, um, and, Dan, and Dan Helmick, um, who have been handling some of the promotional materials for the lecture series. Um, I should really thank the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, okay? You gotta thank them. And I should also thank uh, the 49er shops in the art store. And the reason for that is, and a lot of our students don't know this, um, is that they are the usual funders of our lecture series. And so actually what is happening um, this semester is, is coming from two different funding sources. Um, the 49er shops, when you go in there to buy your cup of noodles or your, um, you know, your watercolors, whatever it is that you need on a given day um, in the art store on campus, um, every month they give money back to the department to help fund our Visiting Artists and Scholars series. Um, I want to thank Mason Cooley um, and, and um, our Visiting Artists and Scholars uh, Committee. Um, and lastly, I want to thank quickly 
Kevin Johnson, who will be our, our honored guest tonight. Um, also, Karen Kleinfelder and Kathy Paquette, um, who went through the hard work tying this lecture series into a seminar that they are offering, um, and, and they will be joining us later in the evening. Also, of course, um, Chris Goats and Michelle Roberge, who, as the director of the University Art Museum and the executive director of the Carpenter Center, those are the people who really put their heads together um, and brought this amazing um, opportunity and this extended series of events of which this lecture series is just one little part um, to our campus. So big thanks to all of those people. I think we should take a moment for an applause because they deserve it. Um, <clears throat> and now, um, having mentioned those, those two who really spearheaded all of this, I, I'd like to introduce, uh, you'll meet both of them later, but I'd like to introduce one of them now uh, to tell you just a little bit more about this, and that is Michelle Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Short person. Um, it's really wonderful to have so many students in the Carpenter Center. How many of you have never been here before? Wonderful. Welcome. This is the Carpenter Performing Arts Center at California State University, Long Beach. Um, the reason that you're here today is because about four years ago when I took this job, uh, Dean Parra, who was now your provost, but at that time he was Dean of the College of the Arts, my new boss told me that one thing he wanted the Carpenter Center to do was to interact more closely with students and to make what we do at the Carpenter Center more of a reality in your lives. Luckily, right at the same time, an organization that we belong to, the Association of Performing Arts Presenters, was offering this big grant opportunity. And the, the idea of the grant, it's called Creative Campus, is to exactly foster that to have the, the Performing Arts Center on a university campus be more involved with uh, student life. So we talked to a couple of professors, I sent out a whole bunch of emails, because we had to come up with a theme. Um, a lot of different universities have chosen a, a myriad of themes, but we wanted something that would immediately touch a lot of different departments on campus, maybe even non-arts departments. So uh, Michael Field, our marketing director, came up to me one day and he said, hey, do you know that 2010 is the 20th anniversary of the NEA4? How many of you know what the NEA4 was? Well, you will know by the end of the next 18 months. Uh, in, in 1990, the NEA4 refers to four performing artists who were granted individual artist grants by the National Endowment for the Arts. Back then, they were giving money to actual artists. Congress decided that they didn't like what some of those artists were doing and rescinded the grant. It was a huge uproar. It sparked what we call the culture wars of 20 years ago. And I think this proves that Michael was right. A lot of students today don't know what happened only 20 years ago. Next year in the fall, all four artists of the NEA4 will be here. They'll be performing the work they're doing now, and they'll be talking about culture wars and, and what censorship looks like today. But in the intervening 18 months, we will be coordinating a wealth of activities that have to do with censorship. Censorship in science, in journalism, in uh, literature, in art, in music, in theater, in all of our lives. Um, there are big banners on campus. Have you seen those, those banners? Yes? They're kind of provocative. Look around. We could only afford seven, but um, look around for them. Um, they're to, to point everybody in the direction of the B Word Project website, bwordproject.org. That's where all the information is. There's a blog on there. We want your thoughts. We want to know what you think about what's going on. If you have ideas for an activity that you would like to do with the B Word Project, call me or Beto. We would love to be able to include you on our um, roster of activities. Um, we created this big project along with 14 different departments on campus and um, we submitted our grant. I was thrilled to learn that we were chosen one over 150 universities all around the country submitted a grant for this project. We made it to round two which whittled 150 down to 31. 
And then we really had to sharpen our pencils and we created the nuts and bolts of what the B Word project will be. Um, by the way, B Word stands for banned, blacklisted, and boycotted, censorship, and the response to it. So B Word project for short. We're interested in how censorship comes around and what people do when they're censored or they confront censorship. So we were in round number two with 31 applicants. We created what obviously was a really compelling grant because we are one of only six, as Chris mentioned, universities throughout the country. We're the only Western university and we beat out UCI and we beat out UCLA. Yay, go beach, huh? So um, please, be aware of what's going on um, with the B Word Project. It's all for you. It is all for the students. There is a community involvement component. Some activities will be also available for community people, as we have some community members in our audience tonight. But it's really for you, the CSULB student. So take advantage of it, and I hope to see you at a lot of these events. Thank you. Chris Miles is coming back. And now, um, before he speaks, I'd like to give you a brief introduction of Dr. Kevin Johnson. Uh, Dr. Johnson teaches here at CSULB um, in the Department of Communication Studies, um, where he, um, he represents areas of specialization um, in cultural psychoanalysis, first, uh, first Amendment issues, and here's a long one, contemporary rhetorical theory and criticism. Uh, Dr. Johnson finished his MA here at CSULB while he was a graduate research fellow in the CSULB Center for First Amendment Studies. He then went on to complete his PhD at the University of Texas at Austin and then returned to CSULB uh, where he currently um, holds the position of Director of Research for the Center for First Amendment Studies. Um, he is the creator um, and director of the Hope Freedom Film Festival, CSULB, um, and in 2010 was honored as one of the NAACP's Men of the Year. Um, recently, he was uh, at the invitation of Justice uh, Kennedy of the, of the United States Supreme Court, um, invited as a guest to hear arguments in the court, and was also a guest um, of Justice Alito um, <coughs> as, as part of the, Vill uh, the Villanova Law Scholars Program. Um, he, he was recently a visiting professor um, at the John Cabot University in Rome, and he was recently selected um, to be involved in a series called The First Amendment and You, um, which, is, uh, which has to do with observing the National Communication Association's Freedom of Expression Week. So um, that gives you a small hint of the credentials and why he's here today. So please welcome, if you would, uh, Dr. Kevin Johnson. Thank you for welcoming me to speak at the first event of the B Word Project. I'm extremely excited to be here tonight and for the events that are to come. The Center for First Amendment Studies is happy to play an active role in helping to facilitate awareness and education of issues pertaining to the freedom of expression. I'm very pleased to be speaking here this evening, and I hope that I can begin this project by framing some of the major issues concerning the role of censorship in American society. But before I begin, I would like to take a moment to, uh, to invite all of those who are attending and or participating in the B Word project to consider writing a scholarly manuscript about the project. At the conclusion of the B Word project, I'll be putting together an edited volume to publish about the B Word project so that people can continue to read about the project and issues of censorship even after it concludes. <clears throat> 